You don't need fancy ass carriers just to take nice shots because you've got one of these in your pocket at all times. And if you just follow these simple steps, you can take great shots with your mobile phone all the time. Now let's talk hardware. You need a phone first, otherwise you won't be very good at mobile photography. And conveniently, I've got one of these Xiaomi Mi 8 Pros to give away, kindly given by Xiaomi UK. Let me give you a sneak peek of what you could win transparent back they call it transparent titanium apparently i don't know if titanium can actually be transparent i don't think it can be but it is here but it does look pretty tasty look and there we have the dual camera the only thing that i actually care about with the mi 8 pro you've got two times 12 megapixel cameras the wide is f1.8 standard is f2.4 which is the same as apple's latest 20 megapixel cam for crisp selfie loving pics of your face but more importantly those two focal lengths on the back will give you enough versatility for your photography it's one wide lens for landscapey stuff to include more stuff into your shot and one standard for people shots that is the prime setup if you excuse my pun with the wide you'll put your subject into context with the background whereas with the standard it'll be just focused purely on the subject itself try using just these two focal lengths not zooming just switching between the two focal lengths and limiting yourself to that get familiar with what you'll see with these two focal lengths and this limitation sort of pushes you to think about what you're framing that is a tidy setup for your creativity some nice little extras to have a depth of field effect to emphasize the focus more on your subject for things like portraits which you can do with the mi 8 pro as well as choose from seven studio lighting effects handy if the background isn't too pleasing on the eye but for really nice photos go look for some gorgeous environments go go on be careful of oncoming traffic though the key to taking good photos is not by using the best fanciest gear but by finding subject matters that are worthy of taking a photo it sounds really bleeding obvious but quite often you'll see somebody with fancy ass camera shooting photos of mundaneness when you think about stuff to photograph think about what makes that interesting list it out in your head of course not out loud here it's the gorgeous autumn colors golden hour light wide open spaces not the guy with a backpack but dear lots of them and asian tourists because if they're there it's bound to be good for taking photos i mean that's not just limited to mobile cameras but when you prepared yourself for a good shot you've got no excuse for taking bad shot with this right when i look back at some old photos i've taken one of the common mistakes i made was to not stand close enough often my feet would be planted to the floor it's an easy mistake to make when you're focusing on what you see and what your hands are doing that you don't really think about using your feet a phone is far less intimidating than any DSLR with massive lenses attached to it or any dedicated camera for that matter. Utilize that. Sometimes bad shots aren't really bad shots, you're just standing too far away from your subject. Move in close. That's much better, isn't it? It brings you into the photo, the details become more obvious. So go on, get in there my son. Oh, dear poop. Fill your frame with your subject, although it doesn't necessarily work on non-human subjects. It's not the phone they're scared of though, it's the person behind the camera talking about deer poo. Alternatively, if you can't get close up, fill your frame with other things of visual interest. Good light is going to look good on a medium format camera or mobile phone, so make sure you've got that to begin with. When the light is this pretty with long shadows, you're bound to get a frame full of deliciousness. Of course, you can't expect us to have the same dynamic range as a full frame camera, but you've got options to try and counteract that. You've got HDR, of course. Also important is to lock that exposure, and you do that on the Xiaomi by pressing quite firmly into the screen like that. And the whole point of that is so that when I reframe the shot, it won't readjust the exposure automatically because I don't really want to be blowing out those highlights. Those are the magical bits. Those are the tasty, gooey, marshmallowy bits of unicorn wee or something. Alternatively, if you've got manual mode like with the Mi 8 Pro, then that works just as well. It's all about that light. The camera sensors on these smartphones are smaller than dedicated cameras, so you'll need to shoot in good light. If you're shooting at sunset or sunrise, you'll be faced with the problem of high contrast scenes. The dilemma is whether to lock the exposure to bring out the detail in the shadows and make the sky too bright, or to keep the detail in the sky and lose the detail in the shadows. One way is to shoot in the same direction as the sun is shining. Make sure you've got something that takes on the warm colours of the light because otherwise the sky doesn't actually look like it's particularly sunsetty. Shoot against the sun and you'll get the sunsetty sky. Pick some subjects that have shapes that will look interesting as a silhouette because they are the details in lieu of textures and surface detail. Then you've got features on the smartphone that will make it look a bit slicker like this has got AI for scene detection. And using the HDR mode, you can get some quite impressive results with the Mi 8 Pro actually. Looks very natural, not some overcooked HDR. 
and whatever that AI actually does. It optimizes exposures, saturations, things like that, depending on the scene. Whatever. I like the images from the Mi 8 Pro. Not just saying that because I'm giving them away. And don't be afraid to shoot more. Shoot more of the same subject. Shoot at different angles, different focal lengths, different perspectives. Then you have more to choose from. You don't necessarily need to come away with loads of great shots as long as you're happy with one shot that's worth the effort you make to try and get that good shot. Last but not least, edit your photos. Gone are the days when Instagram photos would have hashtag no filter. So edit your photos. You can do it either on your phone like this. Damn it. <laughs> I just realized I shot all these photos with a watermark on it. Just in case I've forgotten what phone I took the photo with. Oh, beautify. Food, landscape, portrait. Oh, this looks more like a landscape than a food. Oh, I quite like the food one though. You can put stickers for fun, for fun effects. I don't really fancy putting rabbit ears on my tree though. And adjust. Some more serious stuff. Or well, my preferred app for editing stuff would be Snapseed. Here we are. Snapseed is my favourite app to edit photos with on my phone because you can do so much with it. Sometimes you can do a bit too much with it. For me, I just like to make some minor tweaks to make it looking a bit more slick and that's it. Boom. Bosh, so there we go. That's my top tips on how to get some slick looking photos from your mobile phone camera. Yeah, so if you want to win this Mi 8 Pro, then this is what you have to do. Show us your best autumn color photo on Instagram. Hashtag it with Mi 8 Pro giveaway and mention Xiaomi.uk and me before 11.59 p.m. on 30th December 2018 and the winner will be announced on Saturday 1st of December 2018 obviously. Anyway please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.